What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Over at my brother's house today, putting a cage in red for him. Let's talk about it. Okay, so today I don't really have any of my fancy or cameras or anything like that, so I'm just recording off my cell phone, so if the noise sounds like junk, or the video quality sucks. I guess it always does, so you're probably used to it. Um, so yeah, today we're putting in a Team Z cage, Chromoly cage, into my brother's car, um, which he has started calling Red Foreman. Um, and let's just talk a little bit. I've kind of already started doing some of the fitting, um, and I know I had a video up about when I put the Rhodes race car cage into my car. Um, and people seemed interested in how I was able to pull that off. So here I'm going to do a little bit more video on like the intimate, ugh, the steps in between to actually get it in um, and maybe make your life a little bit easier. So if you look kind of at the car, one, <laughs> ooh, looks like a mess, but two, um, kind of the place I'm at right now, I've got the main hoop in and the two a pillar bars tacked to the main hoop i've got the dash bar tacked to the a pillar bars and i'm about to put in the front windshield bar that kind of goes up there between the two a pillar bars one thing you'll probably notice right away is kind of my lash up of ratchet straps ratchet straps are super useful you can see i got one going to the back one hooked on in the front. This is how I did my last cage too to hold the main hoop exactly where I want it. So first steps, um, I and my brother put these boxes in the car, kind of like how I did mine so that I wouldn't have to go all the way to the floor to weld it. He did a good job making the box. He kind of missed a little bit though because it could should have been a little bit taller. The point of the box, I don't know if you kind of see, is you're trying to eliminate having to get your welder down into these really tight spots. So you want to get it up and level with um, kind of these portions so that you don't have those tight spots. They'll still work. Um, I'll make them work, but um, for you guys at home, if you're going to do this direction, make sure you get them up and level so that we're in good shape. After that, um, Team Z with the main hoop has kind of tells you where to cut it. The only thing with Team Z and kind of how they're telling you where to cut it is that they mark it out for one if you're going to put the plates right on the floor, um, the 6x6 six six plates, or two if you're welding it to um, through frame, subframe connectors, um, through floor rather. Uh, so with doing it the box direction, um, I had to fit it a lot like the Rhodes race car because that, that cage didn't tell you where to cut it. Um, you kind of cut it till it fit right. Um, so I just keep taking away, um, you know, a quarter inch at a time, kind of. First I'd measure, get it in the ballpark, leave it a little long, see where I'm at, and then keep kind of taking a quarter inch away at a time. And that ended up giving me a real good fit to the ceiling. Um, after that, you kind of use the ratchet straps to keep the main hoop like this, plumb, and so it doesn't move. One in the front, one in the back, kind of binds it up. And then after that, you start to... Uh, putting the other bars up, ratchet strap it in place, and usually you kind of want to fit everything before you start tacking. And I had pretty much every bar in here fit before I started um, put laying any tacks on there. So that's where we're at now, and I'll give you some updates later. Well, I'm about to wrap it up for the day. I got here about 8, took about an hour lunch. It's like 3.30 now, so I've been here for like six and a half hours or so. Kind of taking my time, but I'll kind of show you how far I've made it today. Um, you know, I've got to the point where everything is kind of fitted and tacked up, and then I kind of started welding stuff in. So let's look at that. So kind of looking at the cage, you can see I got the door bars in. You can see the dash bars in. You can see the upper windshield, both A pillars. Um, you know, last time you saw it, I had the the main hoop and the A pillars and the dash bar kind of placed in there, a couple of single tacks on them. Um, but now a lot of this stuff. Um, it's kind of starting to get completely burned in. Um, I'm kind of at the step now where once you, once you get it all kind of fitted and tacked in place, um, 
then you really, like you said, you want to get a lot of good tax on everything, and then you start burning it in. You get to pretty much everything you can reach, um, you know, minus burning the headliner and stuff like that, and then kind of, um, then kind of you want to keep working your way around the cage. You want to, you know, maybe start on the driver's side, you know, by the harness bar and weld a good amount of that and switch to the other side and then move down to maybe, you know, where the door bar attaches to the A-pillar and then switch sides and do that on the other side and kind of keep working your way around and not concentrating a lot of heat in one area, especially with chrome molly. Um, so that's kind of what I've been doing and what you'll notice is that I don't have the back bars on. Those are like the last thing you do. Um, and I also don't want to weld the bars to the floor. So it's just sitting on the plates right now. Um, and what that gives us is once I knock the boxes out, um, drill the holes in the floor, then I can set it down, down in the back when the boxes are out and then through the floor in the front. And then that'll allow me to weld out uh, the complete top. Um, then you pick it all back up you slide the plates back in and it's just as it was and you weld the bar out and weld the plate down and then you're in you're in great shape so I'm thinking tomorrow uh, I shouldn't really have any problems finishing this cage and we'll kind of show you how it turned out all right guys so I'm back today uh, to work on Jake's car some more yesterday I put in about six and a half hours I think that's where I ended off last and uh, today we kind of started, we got here about eight, a little bit later than yesterday, and we started kind of welding everything out. So if you kind of look, uh, most of the bars are welded out that I can get to. So like this door bar, that door bar to the main hoop is welded out, the harness bar is all welded out. Um, when you're doing this, um, when you buy a Team Z, there's not a lot of wiggle room because everything's already been coped. But you want this bar to go between the shoulder and the elbow of the driver. So that means you might have to kind of place your seat in an appropriate way. And then you want your harness bar so that your harnesses, if you look at the paperwork of your harness, you know, it gives you like 15 degree leniency. Um, so you want to place that harness bar so it comes pretty much straight at the holes in your seat for your harnesses. Um, I got a good portion of the bottom welded out and the dash bar on both sides. Um, I got a chunk of the windshield bar welded out, kind of whatever I could could actually get to, um, as well as the A-pillar bars to the main hoop. Got a chunk of that welded out too. So next on the list um, is to kind of knock out the boxes, cut some holes in the floor, drop this thing down, and, and weld out the top hoop, and I'll kind of show you what that looks like. Alright boys and girls, we got the holes in the floor, we got the box knocked out, I'll show you what that looks like. So you're looking at, see how the bar's floating over there, you can see the bar's floating here, you can see the, how the cage is going to go through that hole in the floor, and the same over there. Um, and this ratchet strap's holding the whole deal up, so that when I cut the holes in the floor and knocked the box out, it didn't hit me in the head. One thing that I didn't think about is this bar right here. Um, when I initially put it in, I'm like, oh yeah, that's a nice, it'll t fit tight up against that. Yeah, now it might be in the way when I go to drop it through the floor, so I might have to take that whole deal out. Comes out, I hope, smoothly. I think I got uh, the problem with it is I would have to pull the, the studs out of the back here from the master cylinder. Um, pull straight out so that this whole deal can drop down. I, I'd have to look at how it's all bolted in. Obviously, there's two bolts at the top, but... With this stuff out, we're going to release the ratchet strap, 
see what happens. Hopefully it comes comes down and I have plenty of access to the top. If it gets hung up on that uh, steering column box and I don't have enough distance to weld out the top, it's, it's a problem. Okay, so I dropped the cage down. Looks like it's held up by the red strap, but it's not. Hit the floor here. Um, I knew I wouldn't have as much room back here because the boxes were short, but I should have enough room to get in there and weld that. I'm probably gonna have to put the put my half my real little tungstens in. Um, and pretty much have no back cap, and maybe even go to a smaller cup uh, to do the backs. But obviously, you can see, you know, it, this was the point where you couldn't even get a ratchet strap through there. Not the hook, the actual, you know, nylon strap. Uh, these drop down, you know, enough where I, th I think I'll be able to do it, but you can see it definitely got hung up here. Um, so if you're doing this, a um, couple different ways you can go about that. One, you can wait to put this bar in. Um, two, um, you could weld it in a little bit different location so that um, you're doing this. Or before you even put the cage in, you could remove that and save yourself a little bit of headache. So. It dropped down not as far as I'd like, as you can see how much room there is there that it could drop if it wasn't hitting that. But uh, we'll give it a shot. So a little look at what my torch looks like now um, to try to get this done. Um, Furic Jazzy 10, I use CK Worldwide Torch, Flex Head, um, and a smooth back cap. I'll try to do this. My tungsten is very small. I got a couple of these, I'm super small for for stuff just like this. So let's give it a whirl. Turn that noisy thing off. Okay. So all of the joints are completely welded out that are here right now, obviously, besides everything to the floor. So now I gotta pick her back up. Um and then I gotta get the back bars fitted. Um I think what I'll do before I fit the back bars, honestly, because you know you gotta weld the back bars when it's all the way up, is that I'll probably just weld it up, put the plates and the boxes in, make sure it's clean, and then start burning those in. Um, at least so that the cage doesn't move and it's right where I want it to be. And then I'll start on the back bars. Good morning, boys. It's day three. In typical Wisconsin fashion, it went from 70 degrees for the first two days to 30. 30 is the high. I think right now it's low, maybe upper 20s, something like that. Uh, it's cold. That's okay. We're used to that. It's build season. So yesterday, let's talk about where I got to. Um, I got to the point where I put the bars from the hoop back into the hatch. I got the tops of those welded out to the headliner. I'll kind of show you what I did to keep the headliner from starting on fire. Um, I started welding in the plates and the boxes. I at least have everything tacked in plates and boxes wise. Um, the MIG ran out of gas, so that was kind of a damper. So that's where I started focusing on the bars from the hoop into the hatch because I was like, I don't feel like taking the plates to the floor. That's one thing, you can do it all with a TIG. I did on mine, um, but my brother's a MIG welder, so I've been using that just because if it's not perfectly 100% clean and the best fit up, the MIG just works better because you're just splattering material into there. Um, what else is noteworthy? Probably nothing. But I'll show you what I did as far as um, keeping things on fire, from getting on fire. Um, over here is a prime example. So I got a piece of, it's probably not even 16 gauge. It's probably definitely thinner than that. 18 to 20. Just uh, galvanized steel. Um, behind that, I put some wet cardboard. Um, so the 
the steel kind of reflects the radiant heat, but if it starts to get warm, the wet cardboard keeps you know it cool and keeps the headliner from getting too hot. Um, and then a socket just kind of jammed up in there. Literally anything you can find that you can actually fit in there. You know, when that's not jammed up in there, you know, this has got a really tight fit, especially in this corner. You wouldn't be able to jam anything in there, but across the top, the headliner, I'm sure you'll find this in most cars, it sags a little bit. Um, just the backer board itself, not necessarily like it's, be, you know, ungluing itself, but just enough where you can stick something up in there. You know, maybe on yours it wouldn't be that thick, but you just find anything to kind of keep a good spacing and to keep that plate up. And then you have to kind of, you have to sit back there and you have to try to weld up and around trying to fit your melon in here. Um, that's something to keep in mind. Obviously, you'd love to have this bar as close to over here as possible, but then you'll never kind of, it'll be even more of a pain in the butt to get this side on. I got a little bit of welding to do right there and right there. I'm um, on the bottom. I just wanted to get the, the top of it done last night while I was sitting back there. I got to finish place to the floor you can see there's a little tack there but it's not done bars tacked in this box is tacked in and then it kind of comes through the back back here um it might not this one looks pretty decent um this one looks a little bit weird because we had to turn the plate a little bit but as long as this is landing somewhere on this plate and, and who knows maybe i'm wrong maybe it's supposed to be dead in the center but as far as I can tell, it just has to be landing on that plate, and that plate needs to be welded all the way out. So that's kind of what I'm going to have crack lacking for today. Hopefully I can get this done pretty quick. So far I've already spent 13 hours on this deal. Um, it's 8 o'clock now when I got here, so we'll see what time I wrap it up. Hopefully I can wrap it up in a couple hours. Hopefully it doesn't take me too long. i got other stuff to do today. Um, but kind of just to give you an idea where I'm at right now. So let's get crack a Well guys, that's a wrap on the Team Z cage for Red Foreman. Um, this is kind of a big deal because this is one of the big upgrades that we wanted to get done uh, over the winter so that we can kind of move on to, to the other upgrades, you know, electronics and stuff like that. And kind of getting them more set up to be a race car instead of being in between a street car and a race car. So like I said, I got everything welded out. Um, except for the plates and the boxes to the floor. Um, the bottle that my dad got for the MIG was also empty. They gave him an empty one, so he was running to get another one. So I'll come back and finish that at a different time. Um, but today I'm done, and I won't bore you guys with, with MIGging the plates to the floor. Um, if there wasn't a, something I covered in this video about like how to put a cage in that you're looking for, um, Go back on my channel, I did a kind of a review on the Rhodes race car cage that I put in my in my car, um, and maybe I'll answer it there. Otherwise, make sure you guys like, comment, share, and subscribe. Um, you know, tell us what you guys want to see. We'll probably keep filming updates on Red Foreman here uh, through the winter, and then hopefully some updates on my car as I put the new engine in it. Have a good one.